Hey, what is going on guys? It is Uncle Kobe, back with the second installment of my little pre-release weapon comparison slash gun statistics overview slash horse vagina. I don't know, you can call it whatever you want, but if you saw my last one, you know the drill. I go through every weapon and tell you the stats and how I believe the gun will be used in Black Ops 2, and together we try to figure out what guns will be the best when the game finally does come out, and we do this for the sake of entertainment and just overall boredom from Modern Warfare 3, so before I rant on any more, let's get right into it. So in today's video, we're going to be looking at the submachine guns, and this is where I think Treyarch messed up on the first Black Ops, because there was no real SMG that can compete with the assault rifles, besides maybe the AK-74U, and that really hurts the competitiveness of the game, because it really eliminates you know any use of the roll system during competitive play. I don't know if you guys watched any of the MLG events from last year, but unsurprisingly, everyone used the FAMAS. And to me, that is really boring to watch, so Treyarch really needs to up their SMGs for this new game. So starting off, we got the versatile MP7, or as we call it in MW3, the Moab machine. So far from the stats, I don't really see anything that leads me to believe that this gun will be overpowered in Black Ops 2. It has the full 16 point mobility, as do all the SMGs, a 12 point damage, and a 10 point range and accuracy. So stats wise, this is a very average gun, however just like in MW3, what really makes this gun is the recoil, or actually lack thereof. So in MW3, the MP7 had pretty bad hit fire spread up close, but could snipe people down long range. For this game, I really hope they do the opposite, and for this is for all the SMGs, I'd rather they be real effective up close, but not be able to annihilate someone across the map. But stats aside, I still do believe this gun will be very good, so I give it a B. Next we got the Scorpion EVO 3, and this gun takes a big hit in the stats department in every way possible, actually tallying the worst stats in all categories. It is 33% weaker than the FP7 with a damage of 8, 40% weaker long distance with a range of 6, and 30% less accurate with a score of 7. But this gun does boast the highest rate of fire out of all the SMGs in the game, so with that being said it still may be a very liable gun to use, but as of right now, I give it a C+. Moving on, we have my favorite gun so far, that is the POW-57, or what I've nicknamed the Pow Pow. And when I first looked at it, I saw an assault rifle, like you guys can see it right now. To me, this thing is a badass looking assault rifle. And what really made it for me was the description, which reads, Fully automatic personal defense weapon with increased range and the largest ammo capacity in its class. So let's take a look at its stats. Mobility, it is the same at 16. Its damage is kicked up to 13, which is average damage of the assault rifles. It has a range and accuracy of 13 as well, which again is the average of an assault rifle. So to me, this thing is an extremely mobile assault rifle with a big ass clip. The only thing that could bring it down would be an awkward recoil, meaning it didn't just go straight up, it kind of goes back and forth, or if it shot extremely slow. But with the large ammo capacity, I highly doubt it. I could rant on about how awesome this gun sounds all day. I obviously give it an A, but we gotta move on to our next weapon, the Chicom QCB. And first thing, I don't know if you guys can see the name on the screen, but it actually says Chicom CQB, so I'm not sure if they just messed up a little because this video is from a developer's build of the game, so nothing's official yet, or if they decide to randomly change the name. Either way, I don't really care, no one calls weapons by its full name anyways. But what's really cool about this weapon is that it is a burst fire submachine gun, and I don't think we have ever seen one of these in the Call of Duty franchise until now. I can't really say how effective this gun will be. It has pretty mediocre stats with a damage and range of 9 and an accuracy of 11. I do presume the recoil will be low since it is a 3 round burst fire weapon. But since it is so weak, I don't see the usefulness of it, especially in close quarter gunfights. But I'll still give it a C just because I think it is cool that Treyarch is trying something new. Next we have the MSMC, which is another really stat heavy submachine gun. This one's fully automatic with increased range and reduced recoil. I already do hate the name of this gun though, I don't like how it is four separate letters and syllables like MSMC. I don't have that kind of time when trying to explain my class loadouts, but the stats on it do look very nice. It has the highest damage out of all the SMGs at 14, which is actually higher than all but one assault rifle. It has a 12 point range and a 13 point accuracy, so this weapon definitely contends with the Pow Pow. I'm guessing it will have the fire rate of let's say the MW3 UMP, which is a tad on the slow side. However, with a good hit fire spread, this thing would be very deadly. I give this gun an A as well, and let's move on to our last weapon, which is the Vector. Yes, the Vector is making another appearance in the franchise, this time with recoil mitigation technology. Ooh, what's that? 
Well, for those of you who don't know what it is, in Call of Duty terms, they are basically attachments. They could be buffers, recoil pads, muzzle brakes, vented barrels, energy absorbing butt stocks, you know, any apparatus that helps manage recoil. However, in this instance, I think Treyarch is just using fancy words to say reduced recoil. Although, if I do select it and go into the attachments, you can see force grip, adjustable stock, and long barrel, which I'm guessing all help reduce recoil. But with a damage of 10, range of 9, and an accuracy of 12, I'm gonna have to give this gun a B-. So that's it for today's video, I hope you guys enjoyed it, and if you did, I'd appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up, and leave your answer on what gun you think may be the best, or just a weapon that looks cool to you. I'm still sticking with the pow pow, personally, but that is just me. Also remember, I'll be doing one of these pre-release statistic breakdown videos for every class, so make sure to hit it subscribe. Also keep in mind, these all come off of the developer's build of Black Ops 2, so things are subject to change. But what won't change is my love for all y'all. This was Uncle Kobe. Until next time, peace.